Welcome back to Big Boy. I haven't done a shrink rip in ooh, moments, but I thought that it would be fun to have a look at uh, the Jaws of Victory. Uh, NES don't get very many titles out on an annual basis, and when they do come out, they go out of print very quickly. You know, the Killing Ground is still out of print. Same system as this game, and uh, not likely to be re reprinted anytime soon that I'm aware of. But this particular game is pretty interesting because it, it covers a similar period of time uh, so uh, of uh, Ukraine 43. The Ukraine 43 deals with uh, a longer period of time than this game, but it kind of has the lead up of the capture of Kiev post Kursk and then into another January for every time frame, if I recall correctly. So I thought it might be fun to have a look at this. It's built on the Victory in the West system, and there's a. Uh, I always get my game system history mixed up when it comes to Victory in the West. I had always thought that uh, Panzer Group of Kadarian was the very first of the of the systems that sort of represented that <clears throat> that uh, Victory in the West style, but there's more to it than that. So I would say that uh, Panzer Group Gadarian from SBI is a precursor to the Victory in the West system. And then there's the Victory in the West system with its uh, random chip pull for counter strength and uh, its uh, double move exploitation uh, system and a few other bits and pieces that make it relatively unique. And what these guys do is uh, sort of expand upon and deepen and enrich the Victory in the West system uh, to take advantage of some of the, the cool features of it, number one. And number two, uh, it's very different from and not related to any of the other games in the system other than it uses the same system. So I know the Compass games have a Curse game coming out and MMP released uh, Salerno and one other, one other title whose name escapes me right now that I played was actually quite good. Had a few hokey uh, in-house rules, but nevertheless, um, this is completely separate and different. So <clears throat> uh, you can see here, let's have a quick look, uh, two, two maps, 1100 counters, uh, you know, rule book, play, play examples, seven scenarios, I believe are in here. Uh, divisional regimental scale with some supporting battalions and bits and pieces, every turns a day. Every uh, hex is uh, 3.2 clicks. So that's cool, nice box, nice box art. I like it. Uh, good quality box as far as that goes. 2D6, so you've got a box and a lid. Combat manuals with a wrapper around it. Uh, now that's interesting and functional. Let's see what it is. So game credits and then uh, kind of profiles of the leaders from the German side and the Ukrainian second front and uh, the first Ukrainian front. And I'm just wondering now if the MM... So where was I? I had to pause the video for a second. Oh, uh, Ukraine 43. Uh, so MMPs, Ukraine 44... I just pulled the game out and it covers the period from March 23rd through April 7th, 1944. And I stand corrected on Ukraine 43 from Simonich and GMT. It runs through November of 43, so it misses the full pocket experience. Uh, so that's just interesting to note there. Uh, this game kind of covers the in-between, if you could say that. So that's interesting that Arguably, if you played those three games together, you would uh, cover all of it. Anyway, so we've got these leaders, uh, leader profiles, rule book. We'll come back to the rule book in a second. And, uh, sorry, playbook, I should say. And then uh, the rule book. And I'm going to try and lay the maps out because I'm actually going to set this up <clears throat> tonight. Um, okay, it appears we have some scenario set up. Game errata. Probably par for the course these days, no matter what. Now, nice cardstock, thick, kind of 
It's a double sided, double thickness. Individual scenario numbers, uh, setup, legend explanations there. Hopefully you can see that okay. I'm kind of to one side of uh, all of this, but hex locations, double sided. This talks about the scenario length units that arrive and remove and are removed and various restrictions. Haven't had a look at this before, haven't played a NES game before. There's the German setup card. Then we have Operation Wanda. And details on the back, same again for the Germans. A brittle sword breaks. Soviet initial unit and marker setup for von Vormann's reluctant strike. Hmm. Was All right. And then the Konev, Konev uh, springs the trap. Second Ukrainian front attacks. Now, so there's that. Scenario cards, a writer chart, two maps. Let's check these counters out. A lot of counter sheets here. We got, uh, ooh, interesting. We got four here. First one off the bat. is the uh, the German units. Uh, and uh, you can see this is a really decent thickness, good, solid, thick, well die cut, well offset counters. These A's and B's, if you recall, I'm assuming, <laughs> This does this the same, yes. Uh, has a, it is a chip pull exercise for the for the strength of, of the units, right? And the backs of the counters here, which are okay. Right, and then here are those chits that I was referring to, upside down by the looks of it. Nope, they're just uh printed that way. I see. Okay. It's hard. I'm trying to look at it through the camera with you so I can see what's going on here. And then these are obviously, what have we got here? Little companies and battalions uh, and some of well, their further regiments, but uh, AFV counters, the various formations. Looks like all the formations are color coded, so that'll be nice. And of course our Soviet allies here, all the usual suspects, 6th tank, 16th tank, you know, it's funny, you 5th guard, you play with these, uh, all these different war games and you see the same formation names over and over, they're like, kind of like, become like old friends, like, ah, uh, the 6th tank, I remember when it was destroyed in the Eastern Front series, Case Blue, Guderian's Blitzkrieg, and the Russian campaign. Just to name a few. All right, so then your aircraft, jets, transportation, by the looks of it, of some sort, some sort of disorganization capability, and our supply notifications, and uh, bridge breaks, and things of that nature. And on the back of those, further out of supply, regrouping. All right. Oh, it's actually four and a half sheets, so here's another info set of information counters. Um, Looks like they're all German for them building hedgehogs and having their own disorganization bits and pieces. Jolly good. <clears throat> now, turn track. Game record track. With the uh, highlights for reinforcements. Game runs from January 25th through February 18th. So yeah, almost uh, almost exactly uh, run, running in right in between those two games. Interesting. So a sequence of play on here so we can have an easy reference. A reinforcement schedule for both sides or weather display. Very nice. Uh, I've probably gone pretty long on this. I'm sorry for the... Let's get to the map so you probably want to see that. So there's an extended sequence of play. Uh, combat phase sequence. And then a uh, supply track for Corsan, German replacement points, air combat, a CRT, 
which runs the gamut from 1 to 3 to 10 to 1 plus with the typical sort of victory in the west results track by the looks of it the terrain effects table I didn't check on the back of these but no nothing on the back and then one more uh, Soviet player card. All right, let's we're gonna look at maps, won't we? <clears throat> so let's try and lay these out real quick. All right, so first impression here, very uh, clear and crisp fonts and use of color. The white is giving us that winter feel and we're getting really nice Christmas and some little variations here and there with, uh, you can see that gray shading. Lots and lots of villages in this area, right? Here's, uh, here's Tracassi. So this is literally the, the pocket from Ukraine 43. Cut off here. And then we come down around here into the South Caucasus. And then you've got uh, all these towns. There's the Corsan primary area there. And the Germans collapsed off the collapsed off the river and and retreated back. Very very interesting. Uh, all the charts, all these play aids, very very well done as well. They have a nice uh, quality to them. Let's have a quick look at the rule book, and then we'll full color. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was going to be full color. Uh, <clears throat> lots of explanations here by the looks of it, with the uh, with the diagrams and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, detailed sequence of play. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole rule book. You don't need to see all that. It clocks in at uh, 31 pages, including these look like some optionals here, maybe at the very end, yeah, uh, optional rules at the end. So you're looking at an effective 28 pages sans the introductory BS, the first four or five pages of introduction here. Uh, the rules really start, that's a glossary of terms. The rules really start after the sequence of play uh, capabilities on page six and seven. So uh, 21 pages of rules uh, using the good old sort of SBI case format. Uh, hopefully you could see all that. I was uh, holding the book down. Anyway, we've gone well over 11 minutes, so we might as well keep going now. Um, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, just all your standard stuff that is probably going to be very familiar. I'm hoping this will be a quick read and a quick jump in and we'll get, be getting right after it once I get back from game on. Uh, the, the con up in Seattle. Uh, each, each scenario is laid out here for us. And there, are, as I've already mentioned or you've already seen, there are scenario cards. Designer notes starting at page 18 of... Uh, Calling it 26, 27. Uh, looks like there might be some examples of play in the back there, starting at page 23. Order of battle notes. Full description of the pocket and the tactics that were, were, were used and things of that nature here. Um, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. I'll be, I'll be putting that campaign straight up. And I know my buddy, uh, Pete, has got this on the table already as well. We both got this game today. And uh, it's not often we both buy the same game, but we did this time. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be looking forward to getting into it. All right, all the very best. We'll look forward to seeing some extensive gameplay in video. And uh, if the narrative works out and there's a good story here, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll dig into a, a photo uh, narrative thing as well. All the very best. Ciao.